Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. My name is Matt Anderson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Space Force Association. And today we're going to continue our space warfighting talks with a different perspective. We're looking at future guardians. So today we have three cadets from the United States Air Force Academy visiting Space Systems Command in El Segundo, California. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So what they're doing today is part of a cadet summer research program with a company called Star Harbor, which is a startup out of Denver, Colorado, that's gonna build the first all civilian space training astronaut facility. But they're out here in LA to get a bigger picture on the relationship between government and industry. And I just wanted to start off with a quick introduction, let you guys introduce yourselves, maybe a little bit about yourself, what you're majoring at the Air Force Academy, and we'll go from there. Sarah, can you start us off? Yeah, my name is Sarah Skarczanski. I'm from Brunswick, Maine, and I'm a systems engineering major with a focus on human factors. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. I'm Zach Savetix. I'm a senior at the Air Force Academy. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a history major with a minor in space warfighting. Awesome. Erica. I am Erica Rivera. I'm also a senior. Uh, I am a major in space operations. Space operations as well. Yeah, and for those of you that are curious in the audience, the cadets at the Air Force Academy the seniors or the first class cadets expect to get their assignment for what they will go into in the, either the Air Force or the Space Force uh, this August. So we have two seniors, we have a junior, and Sarah's hoping also to go into the Space Force when she graduates in about two years. But uh, So we're all eagerly anticipating that day. We expect them to go into the Space Force. But you know, a lot of the people watching are high school age or maybe ROTC at another university, and they're curious as to how you guys got to the position you are now. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what you did in high school, have you always wanted to be perhaps part of space in some manner? And then the Space Force, as most of us know, was just created two and a half years ago. So, Zach, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about high school. Is this a new thing or did you know you wanted to go into this? Sure. So, I always knew I wanted to go into the military and I thought a service academy like the Air Force Academy was a great fit. I didn't know about the Space Force until one or two years ago when it was created. When I was applying, it wasn't a thing. So this is, this is more recent for me, but um, in high school I was in organizations like DECA, FBLA, um, and I think that kind of some of those ways to get involved are, are good ways to kind of put yourself out there, get outside your comfort zone, um, and maybe something like Space Force is, is something that uh, would be good for you. Yeah, you guys are very unique because you came into the Air Force Academy and when you, when you were considering college options, the Space Force didn't even exist yet. Um, it might have just started for you. Tommy was very, you know, a lot of talk about it was going on, but the cadets that are applying these days, a lot of them were seeing in the applications that they want to join the Space Force. It's one of the reasons they're choosing Air Force over Navy or West Point or other universities because approximately 10% of all graduates of every class, 100 or so, will be going into the Space Force and become guardians, and the rest will become airmen uh, just like they have for decades. But Erica, tell us about your background a little bit and what you're interested in. Uh, so I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Um, I kind of knew I wanted to go in space. I'm, I live out in the middle of nowhere, so my aunt would take out a telescope and just like see the stars out because it would be nice because out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so I knew I wanted to go into space. Uh, I went to the prep school and they were like, in 10 years we'll have a space force. Um, no kidding, 2019 they started it up and it was perfect for me. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, the, the prep school is a great point. A lot of our viewers have no idea what that is and it's about 180 to 200 uh, right out of either high school or the enlisted force of the Air Force and they go in there and they take classes a lot of athletes and it's a way to inject diversity into the Academy women prior enlisted athletes and it's a fantastic program you get that extra year you get another age a year under your belt oh by the way you get paid pretty good money while you're there oh, yeah. but you take calculus you take the ACT you take the SAT and then you know most of them will all enter the academy one year later, so that's a great deal. I appreciate you bringing that up. So we've got Arizona, we've got Georgia, we've got Maine, we've got the whole spectrum covered. Uh, how about yourself? You, I know you play rugby at the Air Force Academy as I well, do. and you're the only non-senior, so you'll have to wait a little more than a year to find out what you're doing after graduation. But tell us about a little bit of high school and what you're doing now. So in high school, I was on the math team in the robotics club, played a few sports here and there. Um, I was never really interested in the Space Force because it was kind of talked about it being created when I first came to the Academy. Um, I didn't really get interested in the Space Force until this January when I got um, involved with I-5, thanks to Zach. And um, after just talking to people in the Space Force and seeing what they do and seeing the engineering side of the Space Force, so that's when I decided that that's what I wanted to do. Um, so hopefully it all works out. I think it will, absolutely. And that's a great lead into I-5 and Zach, the all that rank you see on Zach's chest there is means he's the commander of I-5. Zach, can you tell us about I-5 a little bit? 
Sure, so I-5 is a national organization that focuses on space education and innovation uh, and, and really connecting um, ROTC detachments with and, and service academies with active duty guardians and uh, the commercial side of the space community. Um, so we work on research, we work on uh, pushing out educational materials, and we work on connecting those who might be um, not in the Colorado area with, with guardians who they might have never been exposed to before. No, that's great. Very similar mission statement, if you will, as Space Force Association. It's about educating, advocating for the guardians. Um, so now we'll break it down a little bit. If you were a king for a day, we'll start with you, and you could pick any job in the Space Force when you graduate, what would it be and why? Um, acquisitions, just because of application outside of the military. Um, I still want to do my full 20 years, but um, or maybe more than that. But I think acquisitions has a lot, a lot of good applications, just interacting with different people in different industries and just getting that real world experience really fast. Yeah, for sure. And we are at the, the mecca of Space Force headquarters right here at Space Systems Command. And you brought up a very good point that relationship with industry perhaps is more important with this military service than all the others. And we got to see that yesterday at SpaceX. And Erica, I'm going to put you on the spot. What was the coolest thing at SpaceX that you had no idea, or when you walk away from this, or 20 years from now, that I went to SpaceX headquarters as part of this as this Cadet Summer Research Program? Oh my gosh, it was awesome. Um, at least for me, it was like Disneyland. Uh, seeing Starship, the Raptor engines, and seeing how big those were, um, it was amazing. Also, I had no idea that they were using like their fairings, like just cork. Um, which was awesome, at least for me, um, and just the excitement that they have in their organization uh, to innovate for multi-planetary. Um, uh, to me, that was awesome. It's, yeah. it's just an amazing experience overall. That's great. I mean, innovation has been, we've heard it time and time again from the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General C.Q. Brown. We've heard it from the Chief of Space Operations, General J. Raymond. Innovation, innovation, innovation. So I think I took that away as well. When you go to SpaceX, you see the speed at which they innovate and being able to fail fast and as future leaders and officers and even these last two years, one or two years of the academy when, when you're leading the younger classes at the Air Force Academy, just allow them to fail fast, allow them to innovate and, and you know you have to, if you really want them to innovate, you can't get mad at them when they fail, right? Yeah. You control the environment, the leadership laboratory of the Air Force Academy is perfect for that. Zach, how about you, what did you think of SpaceX? I really enjoyed it and uh, I think one of the best parts for me was seeing everyone walking around with the Occupy Mars t-shirts and you're like oh, okay sure Occupy Mars but no that's actually what they're actively working towards and that's that's the purpose of what they're doing every day so that was just really cool to, to think about. Yeah it's fascinating we often talk about mission vision statements in the Air Force when you're a commander you have to develop them and so on and so forth and we, we joked yesterday that if it's if it can't fit on a t-shirt it's too big of a vision statement but um, I think SpaceX for what you said previously was hey, I would like to take my expertise when I leave the military one day and maybe work in industry. And, you know, General Raymond has said, we talked about it yesterday, one day he hopes that Guardians will be able to go into industry, maybe SpaceX or ULA or other industry, and then back into the Space Force because he sees value there moving back and forth. What do you think about that? Would it be something you'd be interested in? That'd be super cool, best of both worlds. Um, yeah, I get that tech, uh, this hands-on experience from industry and being able to apply that to the program manager side in Space Force and just seeing both sides would be great. Well, it's great. Well, we, uh, we want to thank uh, Star Harbor for sponsoring the three of you to go on this awesome Cadet Summer Research Program. And it's actually at the very beginning of the window. It's going to be um, for the next six weeks, and you're going to learn about another startup. SpaceX was a startup over 20 years ago. Uh, Star Harbor is very similar, a lot of exciting things going on, and we look forward to that continued relationship with uh, Space Force Association, Star Harbor, as well as the Air Force Academy. Um, just want to, if any advice to high school kids out there that might want to be in your shoes one day, there's a lot of them that watch our, our YouTube videos, what would you give them? Uh, at least for me, I was super stressed out getting in, uh, worried about my ACT, SAT scores. I, my GPA was pretty good, ACT, not, SAT not so good. Uh, prep school taught me everything I needed to know. Awesome. Uh, they really prepared me for that freshman year. Um, so. Um, there's always other avenues of getting into the academy if you don't get into the first time. Right, that's a good lesson learned. It, they they really are looking for that that whole person concept, and you know, as we've come out of COVID a little bit, we've seen that universities really are honoring that. It's not just about the test scores. So get involved in nonprofits, get involved right. in clubs, whether it's the math club or DECA or FBLA. I think that's great advice. Zach, what would you say? 
Sure, I would say just don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone and whether it's through a service academy or ROTC, you might be thinking, oh, working at SpaceX or ULA or, or uh, the Space Force is just too far out of reach. It's, it's really not. And keep working hard and get out of your comfort zone and, and you can get there easier than you might think. Yeah, I think that was the highlight for me yesterday when we got to meet uh, the Polaris Dawn crew that joined us for lunch. And we've seen them go to Ecuador and hike 19,000 foot mountains. We see them scuba diving deep water in Catalina off the coast of California. And their whole mantra is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because when you go to space, there's going to be things that happen. You need to be calm, cool, collected, and just deal with it as a team. That's a good point. Sarah? Yeah, I think just being as well-rounded as possible. You know, do something that you're bad at. Just keep pushing everything that you, that you think you can't do. And just try and do it. Try and be good at it. Um, and just, I guess, yeah, what you say, get uncomfortable with being, no, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. Yeah, so just that whole mindset and having that go forward and thinking. Well, awesome. Well, we, we want to give a special shout out to uh, Captain Chacon here at Space Systems Command as, a, as our host today and to the entire Space Force population and community here in the El Segundo area. And that's all we have for today. Semper Supra.